everybody, and welcome to the Bet Friends Beyond podcast, episode 146. I'm one of your hosts, Chris, alongside the world champion, Joe. Hey, Joe. It's been a while. The whole fucking world's out to get us, man. The whole fucking world's out to get us. <laughs> I love that we do that. Brooks does that, too, every time. It's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> you just have to be a, a certain age. I can't even, I, when that song comes on, I have to turn it off because that's all I think of now. No, nah, I mean, that song never comes on for me anymore. Oh, so have we talked about Electric Callboy? Uh, no. I think you would enjoy Electric Callboy. The funniest thing for me was when Matt Berry posted one of their videos and I'm just like, wait, what? <laughs> because I, I was exposed from a completely different sector of my life. Um... But Electric Callboy has now made its way into my iHeartRadio favorites. So when I just go, I just want to listen to some music and just have something play in the background, all of a sudden it'll be some Electric Callboy. And I'm like, all right, let's fucking go. They were the ones that I showed you where it was, um, they were the, um, we got the moves and, um, God, I can't even think of the fucking video that they made eight videos of because it got famous when they were the hair metal bands. Yeah, 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 where they did different versions of the yes. same song. Yes, 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 yes. Because yes, yes. it blew, apparently because Gil was the one that exposed me to it, it blew up on reaction Twitter because that first video was so ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So then that was where they're like, well, we'll just have like people we know do covers of it. <laughs> Interesting. So, hypa, hypa. Hypa, hypa. That's what That's the name of the song. Yes. Because they had some like grindcore band do one, right? Well, they kind of almost are a grindcore band. Oh, maybe they were the one I'm thinking of. Because <laughs> then they have the one where it's got it's it's a similar like kind of heavy, but they were Vikings, so they have like some bagpipes and stuff in it. Mm-hmm. That was the other one that I showed because I really like the way it sounds. Yeah, interesting. And that was the band where when we found it, my first reaction was to Google to see if they were uh, white supremacists or not, because that's the world we live in. When a band really likes Vikings, you have to make sure they're not also Nazis. Did I ever tell you my um, heavy metal white supremacist band story? I think so. Like, when you say it, I'm like, I'm pretty sure I've heard it. I don't remember yeah. any of the details. I went with a show to a friend, with a friend for Dying Fetus. Okay. And the opening act was like a New England, New York heart. Like, okay. Yeah. Heavy metal band, whatever you want to call it. And the singer was like 20 feet tall. I remember this because he would stand he would be off the stage and still taller than the rest of his bandmates. Yes, yes, you told so yeah, you did tell me this. Go ahead. And um at the end of every song he would just gargle into the mic white power. And I remember the first time looking at my friend Sean and being like, Did he just say white power? And then after the second song, Sean looks at me and goes, He one hundred percent just said white power and we were very uncomfortable in this moment. So we left and came back when Dying Fetus came on because we weren't sure what the hell was going on around us. <laughs> because Dying Dying Fetus was the more respectable band. They were. To my knowledge this day, because I've not looked it up because I don't want that to happen, although I don't really listen to them that much anymore, so yeah, it's yeah. not a big deal. Right. I've not looked up to see if they are also a white supremacist <laughs> band. <laughs> that could be true. And that would be weird. I'm just living in ignorance. Yes. Never go see Prussian Blue. Just the word Prussian says a lot to me. Well, Prussian Blue... Okay, so... my this story is like 20 years old. Prussian Blue was this, like, Scandinavian band, or maybe Middle European, and they had two pretty white girls as, like, either lead instruments or, like, one was vocals or both were vocals, whatever. Prussian Blue is apparently a reference to some white power shit. Okay. So they were a white supremacist band, but they were pretty white girls named Prussian Blue, so, like, if you just didn't look into it, Mm -hmm. you wouldn't know. Yes. And I remember it being a controversy at the time, as it should be whenever somebody supports white power. Moral of the story, kids, don't support white power. Black power we're down with, though. Brown power is cool. Green power is cool if you have the dagger and can summon the dragon zord. R.I.P. Jason David Frank. Speaking of R.I.P. See how good I am? I know we haven't recorded in a while. So, like, you'll be listening to this in sequence and it'll be like, yeah. But I want to remember, Ryan, Chris, how good I am. I just took us from fuck Nazis to rest in peace, Jason David Frank. 
So we have not recorded since Kevin Conroy passed away. Since before. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I put disclaimers in all the episodes that... You did in one. Okay. Because of the other gap. I think by the time you got to put the other ones, okay. like, oh, it's been enough long, enough time. Yeah, because we also had a computer error, so there was a gap between episodes too. That's all my fault. I take blame, but whatever. But yeah, any anything to say about that before we make fun of him? <laughs> we don't make fun of Kevin that much. <laughs> Because Kevin's Bruce. And in this episode especially, there's not... Like, this is kind of Brewski being a badass, but... Yeah. No, I mean, obviously, we've spoken of our love of Kevin. And, like, he's... I mean, I said it when he when he died. He's, he's always going to be my Batman. Mm-hmm. You know? And it just... Ironic that it just came up again where somebody asked Mark about... Mark Hamill, like, well, would you come back to play Joker? And I didn't see his exact quote, but essentially... No, because my Batman's gone. Like, yeah. why would I be joking? Like, he's the other half of my math. Like, no. Yeah. <clears throat> Pretty much the same thing. I'll say, as I've been saying a lot over the past few years, so I got a chance to meet Kevin last summer and talk to him for a minute. Obviously, it's at a meet and greet thing, so it's not like it was like we sat down for dinner or anything. That's just because you and didn't ask him out to dinner. It's true. Um... He was a lovely dude. He was doing everything for the fans at that thing. And you could tell even then, like, you can see the picture that I mm-hmm. posted with him. He did not look like he was in the best of health at the time. But he was still out there. He still, like, walked into the crowd and said, like, I am vengeance. I am the knight. He did everything you would want him to do in that moment. So, like, utmost respect to him for that. And I'll say this again to everybody out there. If you have a chance to go to whether it's a con or a meet and greet or whatever and meet somebody that you've always wanted to meet just do it because you never know yeah it's happened to me multiple times where i'm like i'll catch them next year and then that person's no longer with us well i'll throw in too because we just said jason david frank we just said kevin and it may be adjacent because i talked to you earlier you look at somebody like jay briscoe who's a wrestler who's 38 so a year older than me Mm-hmm. just tragically died in a car accident. That was not his fault at all for anyone that maybe not be keeping up with it. Like, somebody else, something happened with them, they swerved into, into his lane of oncoming traffic and hit him head-on with his daughters in the car, and he died. He never made it to the hospital. He's 38. Like, anyone would be like, ah, yeah, you know, like, if you're a wrestling fan or if you're a Ring of Honor fan, ah, I'll see him later. Like, he's 38. He's got plenty, plenty of tread on the tires. You never know. Yeah. You never know. Moving on from that. Reach for the sky, boys. What? what do you say we watch season two, episode 18 of Batman Beyond, titled Sneak Peek? Do we have to? It is written by Alan Burnett. With tele- I'm sorry, story by Alan Burnett. Teleplay by Stan Berkowski. Berkowitz. Berkowitz. We've talked about this. Wow, it's been a minute. And directed by Dan Ribba. Technically, it could be pronounced Berkowitz, but I don't think it's Berkowitz. I think it's Berkowitz. We're still doing the intro thing, aren't we? Oh, we don't skip intros in this house. <laughs> Corruption. Power. Graveyard. Skyline. <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to keep describing literally what's on the screen. So the, one of these episodes coming up was weird. I started watching it, and it didn't say skip intro until then. Yeah. I'm just like, do I not get to skip intros anymore? I mean, I don't when I'm watching them anyway, but... <clears throat> the dancing is just the best part. It is. It's true. It's also funny at this point that... I'm trying to think. Yeah. So, I watch this episode, and I'm like, what happened to Max? Because Max is his female friend. I'm like, what happened to Max? Where'd she go? And she pops up in the next episode. And doesn't she doesn't really come back till the episode after, but... It's like, okay, so I just started to miss her, and then you bring her back. Listen, it was the late 90s. It was a little too much diversity. They needed to Diver- rain it back a little diversity, bit. Diversity, bangerang. I couldn't place his voice, but it felt very familiar. I've got gossip to knock your socks off. Who is boxing trying to jack Taylor coaching hours? Why, he's fucking the champ's girlfriend. The champ? You don't know who that is? Okay, just know that he's cheating and he's going to get killed now. Like, if he was training, how does he know what's on that show? 
He was training. Then there's rocker Jamie Gerald, who just happened to hear her name said. The <laughs> fact that nowhere in this is the, the champ, Killer Croc Morgan, talked about. It's true. That's just disgrace. a shame. It could be his descendant. And now for a headline story. The strange case of Paxton Powers. And I literally wrote, remember him? That girl was a chimera. What was the what was the bad way they said it? Chimera. chimera. This was weird. So at first I'm like, is he just going to grab that guy's girlfriend and that's the thing? But it's like, no. He grabs her. She's into it. He's like, all right, I'm going to jerk off in the living room. <laughs> um, and then he's trying to... But like, it's, it's, it's the web, I guess. But like, it's not like they're naked and just fucking. So like, all he's seeing is two people like canoodling. Yeah. You wouldn't find it so entertaining if you were on the receiving end. Pegging? That was what I wrote. Pegging? Question mark. Yes. <clears throat> Which comes up in another episode. Or maybe this episode. I don't remember. You'll see it all from inside. Which Pegging was... comes up again? Weird what? Pegging comes up a second yes. time? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, it was weird phrasing. Wanting to see things from the inside. I mean... Get real hentai. Been there. Trade secret, which is not an un... <laughs> he just is so angry. <laughs> how dare you not tell me how you're doing these things. That car does <clears throat> not have wheels on it. No, it's a hover car. It's the future. They're also at Gotham City Hall. So you know shady shit's going down. That's true. City, 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 shitty, shitty, city, city. How, 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 how. So, right here, he's my favorite Batman Beyond villain. Okay. Because he walks through walls? No, we're going to get to that in a minute. <laughs> um, one, Kirby Crackle. Okay. Boom. Great. Kirby Dots. Kirby Crackle. <laughs> Two, Blue. He actually has color. Okay. Now, my question is twofold. Which does come up at the end of the episode. Which made me laugh, because I was having this thought right now. And then they answer it, not really. So he can walk through walls. He's, mm -hmm. he's intangible. Yeah. Why isn't he just falling through the floor? Why is he able to push the button on the elevator? He has a little bit of mass in him, and he can direct that mass where he chooses. So he can push it towards down towards his feet so he doesn't just fall through the floor. He also holds a camera here coming up. Very, which you can powerful. see. He can create mass. It's, it's weird. He's a mass master? Yeah. He defies science. No, that's clearly like they talk about it. It's science. <laughs> like, he's using science. If you prefer to face your tax evasion charges, I can arrange that too. He's about to post this shit on TikTok. It's true. There are about 500 members of the Tong here in Gotham City. Like, that's just it. was like, he looks over. You're glowing like an asshole. <laughs> Obviously, he can see you. Hmm. It's a hmm. wall. Hmm. Strange. I don't remember that wall being there. <laughs> but, like, here, it's just. I, he trips the like he he's just, yeah. Sounds like something's happening in city hall, and I said, "City hall, better be careful. That's where the crooked politicians are." It's true. Yeah, all I could think of was Tenacious D, city hall. You're fucking it up for the people that's in the streets. It's actually a consistent theme coming up. Pegging that you cannot trust the government, <laughs> Joe. Pegging. <laughs> Yes. We're both saying the same thing. <laughs> oh, we, like, no. <laughs> Just no. <clears throat> I wonder what kind of animal he crosses DNA with. A uh, Kirby. <laughs> like, that, or it's like, okay, like his... His powers, spoiler alert, are coming from a belt. It's not, like, if he was a mutant, 
okay, because then you could... But it's a belt that he turns with a dial. Yep. <laughs> and Terry is apparently very strong. And Terry... Well, yeah, the suit. We know that. Terry's also incredibly stupid. You couldn't punch the guy, but you think you can crush him with a crate? The bigger question is, why can this guy... Because he's about to. Hold on. Hold on. Get there. After the weird punching that... Ugh. Now, if he was the spot... So why can he pick up a crate? <laughs> That's the real question. Yeah. If he, and here, he's running down the stairs. Again, that's when I'm like, why don't you just phase through the stairs? It would be way more efficient. Yeah, you get a, you get way away from Batman. Then he kicks what he assumes is flammable fluid, pulls out a butane lighter, because, you know, apparently he smokes crack. <laughs> no, don't. There's a lot of fire in these next couple episodes, too. I'm like, what's with everyone just setting shit on fire? Yeah, that's the future. They should have green energy. They should. That, it's also, that's what Batman that's Beyond also, is missing. It's true. Windmills. It's also... I mean, look at that skyline. They can obviously afford them. Um, or turbines. They have that big fucking harbor. I love that, too. And I know it's a kid's show, but where it's like, the big reveal. No, of course that's him. <laughs> well, duh. Duh. <laughs> I got the video. I do love that. That's an atom. It is. It's not the scale, though. Don't forget. Got Zeta in the background there. Spoilers. Zeta, not Pawn. I do love that, because that is the truth, where it's like, yeah, like, like solid objects are an illusion. Reality is mostly empty space. Your apartment's bigger than you think it is, folks. It's true. <laughs> I knew him well. Vibraspace. It always comes back to goddamn vibrations. <laughs> feel it, feel it. Taka died years ago. <laughs> there was a fire. Destroyed all his... <laughs> there was a fire. It's always a fire. Apparently in the future, all the elevators are on the outside. Yeah, well, it's more efficient for the windmills. I've got a tape. Now we're about to have one of the funniest moments in this entire show. This is a V inside peak. Like, he's trying to do a little bit of a Robin Leach, but the voice also seems like it's in, it's, its own voice. Mm-hmm. It's probably just tension. I do like how this progresses, but... It's gonna pop some pills, put them away. Yeah, that's all you want. That's all you need. That's exactly what I think. Untouchable. Oh, you're untouchable too? Oh, no, you're just invisible. Okay. Don't you have a boot to lick? Fantastic line. Moving through walls, eh? I do like this. I'd be a very rich reporter. You are a very rich reporter. <laughs> well, you got me there. Motherfucker just runs in with a bazooka. <laughs> like, this this little stool pigeon busts in with a bazooka and just starts firing. My exact note was, way too casual with a bazooka. <laughs> yes! Runs up to the door, shoots it at point blank range. Yes. Like, dude does not know. I still love this. Like, this is better than pretty much any other villain design in this show. Because at least it's like doing something and it has color. <laughs> Batarang. Da -da 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 -da. Say that again. Batarang. We should do a monorail parody song. <laughs> oh, look, you can't do this to me. I know the DA personally. That's not how that works. It, it is how that works. You busted in with a bazooka. DA's not going to protect you. Also, spoiler alert, because it's about to happen. Terry nor Bruce realize that a camera has been planted in the Batmobile. Bush League. That is Bush League. Bruce literally stares at it because it's on the side of the chair. And he doesn't notice. He's, 
He's getting old. It's you know. I guess the vision you sight's the first thing to go. Yeah. Or second. If it's your second, what's the first? Memory, you can't remember. <laughs> or not sorry, memory's your second, so you can't remember what the first was. <clears throat> Peak isn't really a criminal. Unless being a reporter counts. Back in my day, I fucked reporters. What? You want me to fuck them? I that, mean, if that's what you're into. And that's when Bruce Wayne decided to run for president. <laughs> He's definitely old enough by now. Yeah. Dun dun dun. <laughs> it would have been great if they did the Justice League bit. I have no idea who that kid is. <laughs> Like, I get it. Okay, you know who Bruce is. You have no idea who Terry is. It's Batman. Well, I'm Batman. <laughs> you talking about Batman. Don't know nothing about birth of no babies. <laughs> <clears throat> Just showing off the fucking Batcave. This is hilarious to me. The pixelation is tremendous. Only in so I peek. Shway. You should be killed. I know you're a child. It's no excuse. <laughs> and Bruce calling. The fuck did you do? There's this thing on the web. Playing a camera in the Batmobile. I stared right at it, but I didn't notice until right now. Ace found it. <laughs> He wouldn't stop, bark, stop barking. And I was wondering what was going on. And then uh, I looked right at it and I was like, it's just the Batmobile, Ace. And then he barked. And I think he called me an asshole. I'm not sure. Alfred never called me an asshole. Where I could hear it. Yes. Yes. Having a heart attack. He uses Oxycontins. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That got dark. I was half expecting you. Get it? Because he's fading away. I know the old guy's Bruce. I don't know who you are. Why don't you tell me? Make my job easier. <laughs> Middle of a media circus. He means a lot to you, doesn't he? I believe you. Really, I do. Once you can fake sincerity, you got it made. Yep. Dick. <laughs> like, that's all it is to just, You're a dick. Oh. This is a funny moment that I don't know how to handle. It's a 1980s popcorn machine. Yeah, that's so weird. That's weird, too. I forgot about that. I didn't care because I knew it was coming. He said I wouldn't find it so entertaining if I was on the receiving end. Yeah, what do I know? Maybe you want to get pegged. I don't know. Live your life, kid. Oh, God, the crackle. It crackles so hard. They want to break the internet. Long before Kim Kardashian did it with her bulbous ass. <laughs> there it is. That's a cool effect. That has to feel weird. Because we don't know how deep that goes. So does he yeah. feel his guts? <laughs> this is the weird part. He tells them he's Batman. And they laugh at him. Now, what's weirder, because that's weird. Yeah. What's weirder is if they had watched the show, they would have known he was telling the truth. And it just would have felt weird all around. Somehow I doubt that. And they just, where is he going? I don't know, probably do Batman stuff. Yeah, also, 
fucking since when does Bruce go anywhere? Like they they established that that he's that has become a recluse. He does not leave Wayne Manor. <clears throat> he's got Batman to protect. I do think it's funny that 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 this was this douchebag's plan. Okay, I'll call Bruce Wayne. So what do you want from me? You got I'm not a scientist. Batman's a scientist. <laughs> You beat up the Joker a bunch. You can do something about this. Yeah, Joker was a scientist. I sucked his dick. He was into it. (laughs) I even have the belt he made. You started that fire. That's the it was, answer to everything. To, to me, it was fire. power. I love how quickly it's spreading now, too. Like oh, we got like 10, 15 minutes, Bruce. Yeah, Jesus Christ. So I really think that this was a really cool sequence, and the Korean animators had to fucking hate it. <laughs> because watch, as he keeps degrading, like when he gets kicked back and shit, mm-hmm. part of him, like, falls into the fucking furniture. So you know what a pain in the ass that is to animate? I love how his first move is to throw the DVD like a ninja star. And his second move is to kill Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Like his second move is you won't help me, I'm gonna murder you. See? Yeah. His head goes into the... And then he starts to sink into the floor. Like, it's a cool visual, but... Eh, sucked. <laughs> I'm Batman. You're Batman. We're Batman. Oh. Dropped your gun. Yes, okay, so then... He just starts just phasing through the floor. Gravity. He'll end up in China somewhere. (laughs) No, it's worse than that. (laughs) I'm going to take this just in case. And what would have been really funny is if Bruce just started a fire. (laughs) (laughs) This is a funny moment. Toots, like, that's fucked up. Damn it. We'll get him this time. <laughs> he's like, stop falling. <laughs> so here's the other part, right? So he starts to actually, you know, get... But he's also par- partially phased through the floor. So he would have died if he truly solidified at that moment. Yep. <laughs> and he just starts crying and laughing. He's living with the Underdweller now. My guess, he'll keep right on falling till he reaches the center of the earth. It's about as inside as you can get. So we get a return of Punny Batman, when what he really just said is that that man's going to starve to death. Yep. I just picture him going back and forth. No, because technically what would happen is, if gravity is affecting him, gravity is an emergent property of the um, molten core of the earth so he would just be stuck in the center of the earth as the earth rotates the only way he would fall through is if the earth stopped rotating because that's how gravity works much like magnets (laughs) miracles is what you're telling me miracles but yeah I found it very odd to end with like that's a really dark ending. He just phases to the center of the earth where he's going to starve to death because he still needs to eat to live. He's a human being. And Batman just ends it with a pun. Like, it would have been worse if he He finally got the inside scoop. Like. I mean, that's just the way Bruce rolls. Apparently. 
Age has turned him into a bitter, bitter old man. <laughs> Speaking of being a bitter, bitter old man, Joe, where can people find you on the internet? JoePank.com, J-O-E-P-A-N-C.com. There's all kinds of shit there. You should go there. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Cthulhu Holmes or Joe Pank, while that still exists. You can follow me on Instagram at JoePank36. I do more stuff there. Um, if you want to support my other going effort, no, not Joe Meets World. That ended because none of you listen to it. Uh, <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, but you can go to patreon.com slash clicksnexus. I have a Patreon-only podcast there, as well as a new podcast, The Inner Circle Jerks. First episode is out. By the time you listen to this, maybe the second episode will be out. I don't know. I don't Chris. I don't know when Chris posts things anymore. Um... But the first episode is called Pink Bunk. So you can do that. Uh, ClicksNexus.com has all kinds of cool geeky stuff that you'll probably be interested in. And uh, there'll be there's links to a new Batman set, actually, that I just did unboxings for. So that is probably of interest to you people. What do I mean, you people? I mean you people who are listening to this podcast. Good job covering. You can find me at... Uh... Pretty much every social media at Fortress Chris or at FortressComicNews.com. Remember everybody to give the show a five-star review on the podcast of your choice. To like, subscribe, share, comment down below on the YouTube version of this. And uh, if you listen on Spotify, Joe's laughing at me for something. If you listen on Spotify, apparently I learned this week that you can comment on the show there too. So send us your comments there as well. And if you want to go the extra mile, the Patreon at Patreon.com slash fortress comics thank you all so much for watching and listening this week and we'll see you all here next week green power